Hi everybody, this is David Olson with TwinCitiesPropertyFinder.com. I'm a local real estate agent and real estate broker here in the Twin Cities. Today I got a real estate attorney, John Leaf. He owns his own practice. He's been in the business for over 33 years. He's done thousands of transactions, worked with thousands of uh, clients. And he's here today to tell us, specifically from a seller's perspective, what the benefits of a contract for deed are. And John, maybe uh, you could tell us a little bit. If someone's thinking of selling a property, why would they have any desire to do a contract for deed? Well, it, it uh, opens up or expands the, the possible uh, buyer base for one thing. There are people, a lot of people out there that either can't or don't want to deal with a typical mortgage uh, company or bank, uh, but for whatever reason, they may still be willing to buy, uh, enter into a, a contract with the seller to purchase a property. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's more buyers that qualify sure. uh, to afford it. Uh, there's not necessarily the headache of like an appraisal from a bank. Uh, as far as terms go, the buyers and sellers can agree to just about anything they want to. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only exception to that might be the interest rate that the seller can charge to, to an individual buyer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's governed by statute and, and is based on an index that changes every month. Uh, you need to call the Secretary of Minnesota Secretary of Commerce's office and you'll get a recording that will tell you what the maximum interest rate is that can be charged on a contract for deed or, or private mortgage, the same statute. Uh, and that again changes every month. So you just need to be the seller needs to make sure they don't charge more than that. Okay. So they can charge a higher interest rate typically, maybe than what's the standard uh, bank loan, right? That's correct. And yeah. benefit from that. Yeah, the interest rate this month, for example, is seven something, I believe. Mm -hmm. And of course, if your if your credit is good, you, the interest rates uh, on a mortgage these days are four and a half, four, four and a half, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So. So the, 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 the rates that can be charged in a contract are significantly higher than the typical new mm. mortgage rates, yeah. How about responsibility-wise? Um, you know, does a seller have to pay insurance and taxes? Or? Uh, generally, no. The, uh, generally, when a seller sells a property to a buyer on a contract for deed, all the responsibility for the property uh, goes with the buyer. The buyer is what we call the equitable owner. He had, the buyer has all the rights of ownership except for uh, the bare legal title, which is what the seller retains until the contract is paid off. Now, to structure these deals so that uh, the seller is taking the least amount of risk, I would assume they would want to get the largest down payment from the buyer, right? That's correct, yeah. The, the, from the seller's perspective, the, the, the greater the down payment, the better. What okay. the seller doesn't want to have happen is to sell a property either without a down payment, which would be silly, uh, or even a small down payment because in a year or two if, or even a couple months sometimes if the buyer doesn't make the payments uh, then the seller ends up getting the property back and we'll talk about the cancellation process later but uh, the, the seller might get the property back and now it's trashed he's got to mm -hmm. put a bunch of money into it to, to, to get it sold again to, a, to, mm -hmm. a, to another person. So get a good down payment when you're selling on a contract for deed. Um, make sure the contract says who's responsible for taxes and insurance and what about like uh, if they're afraid that the, the buyer might change a bunch of stuff at the property, tear down some trees, bust open a wall, and if, you know, in the worst case scenario, if they do get it back, now they got this headache. Yeah, yeah that's a good question. Uh, generally, most contracts will require, this, the standard form contract actually doesn't have this provision in it, but most sellers uh, will want a provision that, that uh, limits the ability of the buyer to Make changes or improvements to the property worth more than a certain amount of money, mm -hmm. can you know two, three, five thousand dollars, whatever it is, without getting the seller's written permission. Mm -hmm. The sellers generally don't mind people improving the property. I mm -hmm. mean that just improves their security, and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. However, if they start to make improvements and don't finish them, then there could be mechanics liens uh, mm -hmm. that will, uh, and that's one of the differences between contracts for deed and mortgages. If the if the buyer had, it causes a mechanic lien to attach to the property, generally that's a lien on the seller's interest also, mm -hmm. whereas that wouldn't be the case with a, uh, with a mortgage, Okay. Uh, generally. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's good to note that. It's probably good to qualify your buyer and make sure that they're responsible people that you feel comfortable with and that they're not going to do any crazy projects that would uh, maybe cause serious headaches later. That's correct. Um, maybe kind of transitioning to like some of the concerns. Um, you know, it seems like if someone was going to own a property and sell it or rent it with the rental side, you know, this, the owner has to pay all the taxes, insurance, utilities, all that stuff, and uh, be responsible for maintenance. But on the contract for deed selling, 
buyer's completely responsible for that, right? That's correct, yeah. The, the, it, within a rental situation, if, if the, the toilet doesn't work in the middle of the night, it's the landlord or the, mm -hmm. or the caretaker, whoever, who gets the telephone call. Mm -hmm. With a contract for deed, none of those issues matter to the seller. Mm -hmm. uh, that's totally the all the maintenance. Uh, again, all the incidents of ownership are with are with the buyer, and the seller mm -hmm. just has that bare legal title until mm -hmm. the contract's paid off. So you're not a landlord; Correct. you're a bank, essentially. Essentially, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, some of the things to be careful of if you're going to sell on a contract for deed. Uh, to be careful of, obviously, first thing is down payment. You want to get a significant down payment. You want to qualify your buyers somewhat. You want to make sure that they have the ability to make the payments. Mm -hmm. um, it's, if, if, again, if they don't make the payments or if they don't have a sitting down payment and you get the property back, the risk is that the property will be trashed uh, and you'll have to spend money to fix it up again. Um, th those are the biggest things. Uh, other than that, I mean, it, you just want to make sure you're selling to someone you're comfortable with, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, if someone has... Uh, a buyer has like a bankruptcy or foreclosure or short sale on their record or low credit, that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't continue and, and sell to them, right? As, I mean, as long as they got a really good down payment, yeah. that could be very, very beneficial for a seller, right? It can be, sure. The seller, uh, basically a seller can sell to anyone that they're comfortable with. They don't, it's not like someone uh, else is underwriting it for them if, mm -hmm. if, if the buyers or potential buyers have prior bankruptcies, judgments, even tax liens or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe those are, maybe those happen because the buyer had medical issues, lost a job, there could be any number of reasons why they had financial problems, but mm -hmm. now they're working, mm -hmm. or, or, or at least one of them is working, has a, a good job, good income, uh, it appears that they have the ability to make the payments, the seller it really doesn't care oftentimes mm -hmm. about past credit histories. What if the seller already has a mortgage on the property? They don't own it free and clear, but they still have a mortgage. Maybe they're upside down, and they're thinking, oh, we can do a contract for deed and charge a, charge a, higher, a higher interest rate and maybe break even over 30 years or something like that. that, that that's really a good question, uh, because that, and that comes up all of the time these days. Uh, in general, well, in general, you, a seller should not be selling a property on a contract for deed where there's an underlying mortgage. And the reason for that, one of the reasons for that is that every mortgage uh, nowadays is going to have what's called a due on sale clause in it, meaning that if if the if the owner, in this case the contract for deed seller, uh, sells the property or sells any interest in the property, the bank has the right to call that mortgage due. That's why it's called a due on sale clause. And of course, from a buyer's perspective, that's very risky. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't want to be in a situation where you buy a property in a contract for deed. You're making the payments to the seller. You paid a down payment, may presumably, uh, and then all of a sudden, the the, the 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 underlying mortgage decides that they're going to call the whole thing due and, and foreclose. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, I've never seen it happen in 30 years. I've never seen a mortgage company exercise a due on sale clause. I know it happens sometimes, mm -hmm. but for the most part, if mortgage companies are getting the payments, they're happy. Mm -hmm. They're they're not going to call a thing due and foreclose because the last thing they want, especially now, is, is, is more houses yeah. when, they're getting, when they are getting their payments. Mm -hmm. But from a buyer's perspective, um, and, well, and from a seller's perspective also, I'm very hesitant to do that where, where the buyers especially don't have the ability to pay that off if they had to. To remedy it. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, if, if the par both parties are sophisticated and, and there's just they want to do it as a structure, as a contract for deed transaction, mm -hmm. for for whatever reasons, and and either one of them could pay the mortgage off if they had to, it just doesn't make sense to do it now. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot more comfortable in doing that. It's not illegal to sell mm -hmm. a property on a contract where there's an underlying mortgage. It's just there's some risk there because the mortgage company has the right to call it due. Okay, great. Well. If you're looking to sell your property to the masses uh, on a contract for deed, definitely give me a call as a real estate agent. I can help you market your property to the most amount of buyers and try to get you the best terms. If you uh, want the contract uh, actually written up with special terms or would like to consult with an attorney, John is a wonderful resource. John, why don't you give everyone your contact information? Sure. My telephone number is 952-938-5535. My email address is leaflaw at q.com. That's the letter q.com. And uh, also through my uh, my website, which is leaflaw.net. And I should add also that uh, 
a lot of realtors these days, especially younger realtors, don't know a lot about, a lot about contract for deed transactions. <laughs> David, however, does. <laughs> so if you're, as a seller, if you're going to list a property, that's another, uh, another service that David can provide. Uh, is that uh, he's very knowledgeable about contracts for deed, which isn't always the case these days. It's just good to have a partnership like this where you're not just bringing in random people maybe to help you with the deal, but people that have worked together, that understand each other, understand uh, a lot of the laws and roles and responsibilities. So anyways, we'd love to help you sell your property as an option, or maybe it's land, uh, commercial building, whatever, um, and use this option to help you to creatively uh, net the most amount possible. Anyways, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and watch our other uh, parts in this series. Have a great day.